working seven days a week and 24 hours. Yep. Dr. Kevin Alco, welcome to the show. Welcome to Become Your Own Superhero. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, you are so well. I'm grateful you came on the show. Most people listening to this episode, Doc, are not going to have a single iota clue about who you are, but they need you in their life. This is the man that organizations and the best sporting teams on planet Earth bring in to make them champions. And I've lost count of how many Super Bowl and NCAA rings, but it's in the 30s. You're running out of fingers. 32, right? Yeah, I ran out for a while. So let me ask you this first question. What does it take to be truly successful? Uh, a choice. It's, let me tell you, it starts with a, with a choice, my friend. I got something called the Feinbaum Network. Uh, the Paul Feinbaum Show, SEC. I'm on, I'm on there on Martin Luther King's birthday. A guy calls in and says, I'm Jay from Huntsville. I was born and raised a racist. Father's in the KKK, uncle's in the KKK. I was proud of it. Vietnam broke out, joined Marines. Met a man, African-American man, we tried to kill each other. Our gunny sergeant came to us and said, you two are going to decide to get along. Next thing I know, he saved my life. Y'all killed each other a minute ago. Now you're saving each other's life. He said, I saved mine. We have a phrase we use. I work in Alabama. It's match me. He said the war ended. Uh, he went home to Detroit. I went home to, uh, to Huntsville. Didn't want to leave. I go, wait, you don't want to leave hell? You don't want to leave Vietnam? No, I didn't want to leave. You know why? Because they had family, they had connection. There's a phrase in the Bible, one can chase a thousand, two can chase 10,000. That's pretty good. So we got to come together when we get connected. So they, they had family. He said he had hard times. I went to Alabama, got my degree in engineering. He came to work for me. He always outdoes me. He got his bachelor's, master's in engineering. I went to work for him. Then he laid it on and said, 32 years ago in April, I married his sister. Best man of my wedding, we're best friends. We get together every night and lie about our war exploits. He said, him and I have a really good life because we decided. I mean, we're addicted to motivation. Fire me up. Get me. That's, that's for amateurs. It's a choice, baby. You got to choose it. You decide that you want to become, let me get this word, the best courage, the world's best courage, coach. You decide you want to have some courage. You decide you have some re resiliency. You decide you're going to forgive. The other stuff's a feeling. I feel like I'm going to pout. I feel like I'm going to be offended. No, you choose it. And you know what? When they come on your program, it's deciding day, dog. It's deciding day. That's all. You got to decide. And so what does it take? Decide. After that, then you save lives. You go up. You start listening to the World's Best Courage podcast. The rest is kismet. You don't mind if I came out sprinting, did you? <laughs> I, I didn't, you didn't think I was going to come out jogging, dog. <laughs> we needed a hook for the podcast, Kevin, and this is exactly it, my man. <laughs> you are so welcome. August 26th, 2022, I celebrated six years of sobriety, longer for drugs, longer for gambling, longer for philandering. You have a background in addiction counseling? I was, in, I was uh, licensed. Was that from your own challenges? We, yeah, yeah, not mine, but in my family. I bear, my best friend was my cousin, put him in rehab, buried him at 29 years old, at 49 years old, cirrhosis, he died. Uh, my father came back from the war. I was just talking to somebody about it, had probably had post-traumatic stress to sort of work that out on a bar stool. Look, every family is, is impressed, is impacted by addiction. Every family. If you're not an addict, you're related to one. We all are. And so, you know, they have recovery, the higher power concept, understanding that, um, understanding that there's a calling on our soul that we have to connect it to something. And if we don't connect it to something higher, we'll connect it to something lower. So do I personally have it? My, my thought is everybody has some addiction. You better just hope you got one that's not going to take you out. But you're almost blessed if you do have one that's going to take you out because then you attach yourself to something higher than yourself. So. Yeah, I, I think every one of us out there, all your listeners, either has one or you relate to one. How many true champions have you met, particularly in the sporting arena, that come from horrendous addiction backgrounds and have been able to overcome? Most all of them. 
you know, what I read an article called The Cradle of Eminence. And I don't know if I'd quite say addictions, but when an immigrant comes to the United States, they're five times more likely to become affluent than somebody born here. And now we're doing a study with New York Life Investments on these different companies and people that have exploded up and they've all had unbelievable adversity in their lives. One guy we're working with, he was a kid and he was parachuting down, parachute never opened. He had to recover to not become a quadriplegic. One St. Jude's Hospital sent him to die from cancer. He didn't. So you take your adversity and you bring it to the playing field of life later, number one. And number two, you have to have a moment where you come out of it and have a blue sky moment. Blue sky moment is the moment like Jimmy Carter goes to his wife, goes, you know, I think I'd be president of the United States. She goes, Jimmy, you're a peanut farmer. When did you think that? So I never did. But I met a couple of presidents and I rose back. I can be president. I think I got this. So to your point, you've got to do a couple things. You've got to take the adversity you had and bring it. You, and so I think what happens is some people have that adversity young and go through addictions and go through challenges. But if you can overcome it, what happened to you would have happened for you. Come on now. So that's the first part. The second part is you finally sit back and go, you know what? Now that I see my life clear, I think I could be anything. But the power, the power like you, you know, you, you come out of me and go, I can see clear now. And now you take that from, from where you are being an adult. And you understand from that the, the power of discipline, giving to others, having a higher power in your life. Those same things will bring you peace, can bring you a lot more. So I see it quite frequently. There's a technique that you spoke about in another interview you did with Brad Lee three years ago. And it was a, a test on when you're interviewing the players to know whether they're going to be successful or not. Would you mind sharing that with us? Tell me of a time, Laban. You start off with the tale of time. The best, the best indicator of the past is the future. You know, you're single, you're dating somebody, you're driving down the road, right? And they say, my ex was this, my ex was that. And love's new. So y'all, your ex must have been a jerk. You're with them three months. You're thinking, your ex has some good insight. <laughs> so look, they come in, these, in this thing, they want to give me their philosophy. Come on, dog. You just tell me the way you could talk. I want to know you did it in the past. So what you do is you ask one question. Tell me the best game you ever had in your life. And this came from an article in the Harvard Business, in the, in the Wall Street Journal. Healthy, happy people say three, work, three things in there. Here's the first one. The unhealthy ones say, I and me. I dismiss them. Happy, healthy people say the word we. If they say we, man, I start doing my little cabbage patch dance. When they say we, it's we. They don't talk about what they don't want. They talk about what they do want. Because you're visualizing with your tongue when you talk about what you don't want. And it's where you started, cowboy. I don't want to hear, I feel, I feel, I feel, I decided. And like, you know, a, an abundance of the heart to mouth speaks. I'll speak to those things as not as if they are. Listen to their mouth. And if, you, if, you're, if your listeners, yeah, man, you got me fired up now. If your listeners want to become a success, change your tongue. Change your tongue. Start talking about what you do want. Start using the word we. And start saying, I decided. No, addiction, I mean, look, look. Inspiration for amateurs. It's a choice. Hey, we get addicted to, to inspiration because I got to feel it. I get an NFL of time, make a $10 million a year. I ain't feeling it. You ain't what? I ain't feeling it. No, you got to choose it, baby. So what I listen for is we. I listen for them talking about I decided and I want to talk about what they do want. But if they did it in the past, they're going to do it again. What's, what's my Angelo's phrase? When somebody shows you who they are, believe them. But they get these egos up in there, baby. They go, oh, when you come with me, I'm going to change you. Mm -hmm. we'll I feel like you've been hanging around Liz Brown. <laughs> we'll see who gets changed in the end. You'll be taking back stuff you ain't stole in the end. <laughs> Have you been hanging around Liz Brown? No. Recently? No, I'm from the hills. I know a little bit about it, but no, I'm from the hills. I'm from I'm a hillbilly. He's a yeah. <laughs> you He's guys can from be. Ohio. I'm from country. 
<laughs> you could be the same person. This is unbelievable. He's he's a hero of mine. He wrote the forward for my book and a, and a dear friend. So uh, it's a huge compliment, I tell you. No, I'm not offended. I'm just from a different part of the woods. Jim. I know this whole story. <laughs> Good stuff. What what in the time that you did that interview with Brad? Right, three years has gone by, give or take. What have you learned in that time that's new that you can share with our audience today that might be beneficial? Your mind's a big garden. You plant every day in that garden green beans, you're going to grow green beans. If you plant every day corn, you're going to grow corn. If you plant nothing, you're going to grow weeds. My biggest thing I've come up with this year is plant, plant, plant. I'll give it real simple. Get a notebook, write your goals every day. Now, here's what I really came up with that no one's going to talk about. Nothing will be more instrumental in your success and happiness than train. Let me stop with that. Train. Not philosophic, practice, ignoring. First, ignore ignorant. I'm on a, I'm on a tram and I got my hand on a, on a pole. And this guy goes, your hand's taking up too much pole. So I'm gonna fight this fool. I just went down to three fingers and kept going, right? You train to ignore, here's the other one, right? Irrelevant. Quit paying attention, stuff doesn't matter. Well, what do I mean by that? I used, to, I, I used to walk around that wall in Jerusalem that Nehemiah built, and every day this guy Tobias said, come fight me. Why am I going to fight you? I got to build this wall. And so you'll hear the, my boys at the Eagles, Jalen Hurt says after every game, keep the main thing the main thing. The main thing is your goals and your nitty-gritty goals, your goals and your process. Here's the big one. Ignore interesting. It ain't important. And there's so much interesting out there. So what? Become the director, writer, and major actor in your own life. Who about everybody else? And so it, the, ignoring is powerful. So Ron Rivera was on TV last week. That's my boy. I coach him. And they said, you got a lot of stuff going on here with the Washington Commanders. What do you tell your team? I tell them, don't pay attention to what's interesting. Pay attention to what's important. You, your job your teammates, get your mind in a simple place and train your mind to ignore what is ignorant. You know, don't, don't argue with a fool. Don't argue with an idiot. They're better being an idiot than you and they'll pull you down to their level. They'll beat you with their experience. Don't get into stuff that doesn't matter. There's only so much time you have. Your most expensive coin, your most valuable coin is time. Whatever you put in that machine, make sure you get back what you want. The third one is, ignoring i'm telling you it's learning there there's too much crazy out there and so you want to ignore now can i tell you the biggest epidemic we got today tell me offended everybody's touching used to be you made a mistake we said excuse me but you want to look at it. now burn your house down make sure kids never eat again make sure we you know make sure we destroy your career come on whatever happened worry about the long you and i not not, not specking somebody else's I can't do nothing about you, anybody else, Brad. I can do about me, ownership. What have I learned since that interview? The power of ignoring. Hey, come to Elko Family Reunion. It, it, it looks like the bar scene from Star Wars. And <laughs> all, your list, all your listeners have a crazy, a crazy family member. And if they don't, they're the crazy family member. Ignore that. That doesn't mean we don't need boundaries. But quit getting sidetracked. Quit letting your apparatus get hijacked. It's got to drive the car. What have I learned since then? The power of training your mind to ignore. That's what I've noticed. The, the goal setting component, Kevin, how, how important is the language when we're writing these things down? Past tense language. And so you write, this is a, this is a study that we found originally was in Mark McCormick's book when they didn't teach in Harvard School of Business. We saw it replicated Jesuit University. It's, it's uh, look, they listen to this and listen to you. You want one phrase, structure. Winning, we did, re look, you have people on here, that's cool. But what we did at Forbes is we looked at the science of success. It's goal setting, resiliency, and connection. But structure, doing it all the time. So I write out every day, healthy body. And I write out what's called my nitty gritty goals afterwards. That's a longer deal. We'll get into some other time. I write nitty gritty goals, 
healthy body, which I do hit training. I'm a vegan. I eat nothing with a mother, nothing with a face. I meditate. That's my nitty gritty goals. I wrote, I write out connection, a study done by George Vine at Harvard. Number one factor in happy is connecting with other people. And I write out growing in my calling. And I write out every day constantly because the, the, the research he found was it took 100 students at Harvard and asked them to write them out every day. 84 didn't do it. 13 did in their head. They made twice as much money. Now, I know money isn't everything, but I like what Zig Ziglar said. It ranks up there with oxygen. Three did it. Made 10 times as much money. You want to keep planning it over and over and over. So let me tell you why. I write them in past tense. I broke my rib one day. I wrecked on my bike. I wasn't paying. My mom went all the way there, and I lost my wallet up in Boston. I just kept on doing this meditation. Thank you for returning my wallet. I didn't have my wallet. I thank I I pray and I'm thankful on credit, baby. My thankfulness is a Visa card. So I write everything out. Three days went by, my doorbell rang, postman's hand us, here's your wallet. Of course it was. Appreciate you delivering it, bro. Past tense. I and I keep it simple, but my nitty-gritty goals are very, very con. I keep it vague. My nitty-gritty are very, very specific meaning the actions I'm going to do that day to get there. It's great advice. Really great advice. I do all past tense. What's like, your you know what I'm writing already? Tell well, me. I got a laid out crib like yours. Thank you for giving it to me. I already got that written down. I already thank, thank you for that one. <laughs> I'm going to be your neighbor down in Mexico. Los Quiados <laughs> mucho. I'm going to be right there with you. <laughs> We look forward to having you down here, Doc. What's the what's your definition of of success in life in all areas of life? That look, you go to you go to the uh, pillar of faith up in uh, Boston. Up there's six pillars of faith dedicated to Holocaust. The sixth one is by a little girl that found five years old, Ilsa. She found a strawberry. The only possession she had, bro hid it in her pocket, and wrapped it with a leaf. The only thing she had could have been killed for what she did. She saved it all day, Ilsa did, to present it to her friend, Gerda. Here it is. You got a gift. God gave every one of us a gift. How would you feel if this holiday you gave somebody a gift and they didn't unwrap it? Go do what that little girl did. Take your gift. If it's speaking, if it's serving, if it's being kind, whatever your gift is, now, if you think you have three or four or five gifts, get married. Don't explain you're overrated. Everybody got a gift. Go take your gift. I see you, bro. Go take your gift, develop it, and offer it to the world as a blessing. That's what, that's what success is. Take your gift, whatever it is. For years, the number one autograph giver with the Seattle Mariners was Ken Griffey Jr. You know who number two was? Their lead peanut salesman. My man, cabbage patches, he throws them between his legs. 40% of the time, he spends on autographs. Any gift will do. He makes seven figures selling peanuts, bro. Any gift will do. You develop it, and you go offer it to the world as a, as a service, as blessings. It'll come back to you. That's my definition. If I'm not taking my gift, the better what's around me, only you. There's research that says if you have a goal and you get there alone, whatever it is, you have a goal and you get there with somebody else, whatever it is. And Holly Haverson in her work at Columbia said people who write goals are happier people, especially when they know that their goals better the lives of others. You, well, shouldn't your goal be to be happy? And by the way, to all your listeners, go become happy because if you're not you're burned to somebody you're in a relationship with. Probably some of you're married to. That's my definition, bro. How closely aligned to thinking grow rich are your beliefs and values? Extremely. Extremely. The stuff that he wrote, other than I mean, if I just canned it, other than the energy he gave to some of the stuff like sexually, but other than that, uh, completely aligned. You know, I'm not one way or another on that. I mean, that was one area they got into. But other than that, the mastermind group, the what your mind can conceive and believe, the body will achieve 100%. 
and I'm I, look, I'm not in any way promiscuous or anything sexually. But if you read the book, that was the only place I'm, you know, like there, that's the only place I was off on it. But I thought the rest of it was incredible. I thought it was, I think it's that the magic of believing is what made the best book I've ever read written in 1940s. I love Wallace Waddle's work, The Science of, of Getting Rich. I love it. You know, I, 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 I think Shin's work, The Game of Life and How to Play It. Those books written in that era blow me away. Blow me away. Where do you go for help when you're going through major adversity? You're asking me, so I'm going to answer it straight, the Bible. I get in the morning, I pray, I meditate. You, I, you know, I'm not going to shy away from that because, you know, it, look, if, if you ask me, so I'm going to tell you. I go to that, and I'm not fundamental in it insofar as if whatever your religion is, I'm not going to proselytize you to mine. I just want you to have a, whatever relationship works for you. But that's where I go. I go in the morning and I, I look, your, your attitude is a muscle. So I got to exercise it every day and I got to prepare for whatever's coming. But I have faith. I have faith in faith. I have faith in you. I have faith in me. And I don't believe anything happens to me. I think everything happens for me. I don't know how, but I go to Jeremiah 29, 11. There's a plan for my life. And I go to Isaiah 6, 8. I heard a voice say, who should I send on my behalf? And I said, send me. And I, my, my spiritual is real easy. Somebody's going to hurt today. Bring them to me. Got a call 135 the other day where someone called and said, my daughter's uh, husband just passed. All right, I'll give, I'll, I'll, I'm going to go see him as soon as I'm done with this. You know, my daughter called me in the uh, middle of the night and said, my best friend's brother just overdosed on fentanyl. Three o'clock in the morning, I'm there. So mine basically is I, I, two things. You know, it's, there's a plan for my life. And if somebody's hurting, call me. I played, I played football 12 years. I was captain 11. I was on the bench nine. I chose the wrong parents, bro. But when them guys I play with are hurting, I'm the one they call. That's my motto. Call me. That's it. You know, I was so far away from the field, I needed a telescope to see it. But they, but what, they call me. You're like that's, Rudy. That's what it is. <laughs> What is the last major, major adversity that you experienced and how did you overcome it? My heart, my, my heart. I had a, uh, my dad had 12 in his family. My mom, eight, all 20 died of heart disease. They carried me out. Now I went to Cleveland Clinic. Now I said, you're going to live, live 40 years. Cause I, I'm a vegan. I eat nothing with a mother, nothing with a face. I do, uh, you know, I do hit training. I did already this morning before I jumped on with you, but it didn't happen. My, it happened to my cousin, too. It happened to my sister, too. And my cousin kept on saying, this would be the best thing ever happened. And he was right. It took a while, but he was right. And how it helped me, here's how it helped me. You ever, uh, you ever hear the song? There was this guy named Tug McGraw, pitched with the uh, Phillies. Came with the phrase, you got to believe. They tra- he was with the Mets. They trained the Phillies and said, uh, what do you like better, AstroTurf or grass? I don't know. I ain't never smoked AstroTurf. <laughs> So he, uh, he passed away. His son's a country western singer, Tim McGraw. And uh, a song came over his desk of his son after his dad died. It was about a guy with a bad x-ray, went to his friend, it's over. Which do you realize? I went skydiving, went Rocky Mountain climbing, went 2.7 seconds on a bull named Fu Manchu, loved deeper, spoke sweeter. I gave forgiveness, I've been denied. Hope you get a chance to live like you're dying. I'm going Christmas shopping with my daughter here in a few minutes. And when I do, I'm acting like it's the last time we ever get to shop together. I do everything like that, everything like that. And it didn't happen to me, it happened for me. And there's something called post-traumatic stress. But if you look at some of the work that's going on right now at the University of Pennsylvania, Martin Selleck, there's something called post-traumatic growth. And all you gotta do is choose which one it is. That was growth for me. Changed me. Made me understand that my wealth is my time. And I got my, I, this, I, I, I think I got about 40 more Christmases to go. But I'm act like it's one. I, I think I got a couple more hundred interviews like this to go. But I'm treating you like you're the last one. Plus, it's a cool look you got, bro. <laughs> it goes a long way, huh? Thanks. <laughs> well, I, I'm very respectful of your time. Uh, and I know people, a lot of people want your time, but how do people get a hold of you? 
Kevin. Like, go how doc, else? Go to DrElko.com. And it's e e e -L -K -O, D -R -E -L -K -O right? DrElko.com. I mean, I speak like crazy. I'm all over the place speaking. We're doing good. My agent's name is Snake. Where I'm from, everybody has a name like that. Snake, <laughs> Possum, Dirty Weasel. Dirty Weasel's my sister. And uh, so what they do is go get him. I have books. I have seven books out. We uh, The eighth one's coming out. So what, now what? That's my model. So what, now what? Which is the resiliency phrase. Go to DrElko.com. If you want us to speak, we do it. We have a deal called the 14 Challenges. That's on there. We have different coaching programs we do on there. We do something every Monday that's free called the Monday Cup of Inspiration. We have about 100,000 people listen to that. So just come on on, let us help you. Go to DrElko.com. Hey, Snake, whatever you need, Snake, we'll get it for you. And uh, we have audios, videos. We have books, whatever we can do. We speak constantly. And uh, we're happy to do anything we can for you if you give us a chance to be a blessing for you. We appreciate you, Doc. Do you have any concluding thoughts for our amazing audience today? Neurons that fire together, wire together. We're not trained naturally. We're not wired naturally, my friend, to be what you're doing. We're not, we're wired to be safe and secure, not happy and successful. You got to reprogram your brain. Get yourself a workout program over and over and over. Listen to programs like yours. Courage, it's how you wire yourself. And our brains are very plastic. I, with all my ball players, develop a go-to script. I say three things every day. Keep chopping. So what now what? And I'm not looking for blessings to come into my life. I'm looking to be a blessing. Speak your mind till you rewire it. Speak it till you have grit. So what now what resiliency? And I'm not looking for blessings to come into my life. I'm looking to be one. So your life has significance. Covers it all. Covers it all. Talk to you and treat you like your own best friend and you be your own, wait on it, world's best courage coach, and then get you to help them to coach themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Kevin Elko. I got superpowers, superpowers, working seven days a week and 24 hours. Yep, I got the business saying this boy sure is up to something. Why don't you come and listen? Just don't get the power button. They say I'm crazy when I say I got the superpowers.